Now here's a question for you. When you're braking, should you be doing it with your front brakes, rear brakes, or both of them? Well, that is a very good question. And today we're going to be covering just that. And after all, being able to slow down or even stop quickly is a pretty essential skill with cycling. And ironically, can also help us to cycle faster whilst being in control of the bike. So today, we're going to be covering how to brake. Oh. First things first, don't be afraid to use your brakes. And certainly, don't leave them to the last minute when actually you're really going to need them. Well, with all things in sport, it's important that we practice our braking to really understand how it feels and that feedback of the brakes and even the tyres on the road. Yeah, so I've decided to go and find a quiet road to see exactly what's going to happen if I just use my front or my rear brake as opposed to both. Okay, here we are in the downhill section of the road. I'm going to hit about 30k an hour and stop using just my front brake. So now I've stopped just using my front brake, now I'm going to do the same, but just my back brake. So we've just done the second part of the experiment using just the rear brake, and these are excellent tyres, and I think this establishes exactly why you shouldn't rely solely on your rear brake, because if you skid, this can happen. So that's the little experiment over with. Use the front brake in the first part, the rear brake in the second part. As you can see, you definitely don't want to rely solely on your rear brake, and that's why we recommend using both, but largely using your front. Now this sounds a little bit counterintuitive to me actually, because a lot of us fear by grabbing on that front brake, we're gonna, well, flip right over the handlebars, and that is actually a real worry and concern if you pull awfully hard on that front brake. But that's where this feeling and understanding of our braking comes in. So, why the front brake? Well, this calls for a little bit of a science lesson, I'm afraid. And what happens when you brake any sort of vehicle or bike in this instance? You experience something called dynamic load transfer. So when we brake the bike, our weight suddenly moves forward on the bike. So essentially the front of our bike is heavier than the rear and therefore also means that we have more grip through the tire of that front wheel as opposed to the rear wheel. And that happens every time we brake. Okay, so if we're exclusively braking through the front brake, then should we have a rear brake? Well, yes, we should, and our bikes do come with them. They're really useful for scrubbing speed and also for just general varying conditions that we're riding in. Yeah, exactly, and I normally try to advise that it's somewhere around 70% front brake and 30% rear brake. And that's just, I guess, a rough figure. Um, but what happens if you want to stop suddenly, as you said before? Well, this calls for a little bit of a change in our weight and distribution of that weight. Not our weight, because we're not gonna change our weight, but the distribution of our weight is going to change. So we want to actually get our weight slightly further back on the bike. So we're gonna push our bum into that saddle to try and make the back of the bike slightly heavier than the front. However, when we're riding in wet or slippery conditions, these rules do change a little bit. Our front wheel is more likely to slide out when we're on a wet and slippery road surface when we use our front brake. That's basically due to this added weight over the front end that Mark's been talking about. So that means you've got to think about using that rear brake if you think there's going to be a higher chance of skidding. Yeah, exactly. And on that note, it's really important to actually start braking sooner and earlier in these wet conditions. Because firstly, not only are your wet brake pads going to struggle to slow down a wet wheel, unless of course you're using disc brakes, they're a little bit better. But secondly, also your tires are going to have less traction on the wet road. So I guess on that note, Mark, we should probably head back out on the bikes. Yeah. Now, let's move on to talk about the timing of our braking. I'm sure you will have maybe heard lots of people talk about getting all of your braking done before you enter a corner and try and do none of it in the corner. And I guess for the most part, this is true. However, yeah, I would say there are some exceptions. We obviously always want to strive to do all of our braking before a corner, but I reckon if you speak to some of the best bike riders out there, they might still quietly admit that they do a little bit throughout a corner, particularly if it's a very sharp hairpin or perhaps the corner tightens up as they're rounding it and it takes them a little bit by surprise. But what I would say is that 
really try to avoid doing this in wet conditions. Yeah, and that's a really good tip. And another good tip is to try and, well, look where you're wanting to brake. A really bad trap that a lot of us fall into is looking down at the wheel right in front of us rather than looking at where we want to stop. And another thing I would add to that is really try to make sure that you stay relaxed whilst you're braking. Try not to tense up and straighten your arms up because not only is that going to affect your braking, obviously, it will really affect your handling on the bike. And finally, it's important that we consider our braking surfaces and the wheels that we're using because their performance does differ very slightly. So if we talk about alloy surfaces or braking surfaces, then they perform really rather quite well in dry conditions. But as we find with most braking surfaces, they perform a little bit less so in wet conditions. And we talk about carbon braking surfaces now. Well, the technology is really improving on these. They typically used to be quite poor all round <laughs> compared to alloy surfaces, but they're really very good now. And, and in the same way, their performance declines a little bit in wet conditions. Now, an awful lot of bikes, TT and Road alike, are coming equipped with disc brake technology now. now Quite frankly, these are game changers. They're really good, especially in the wet conditions. Now, one final point to note about your brakes, whether it be regular carbon, alloy, disc, whatever, is you need to be careful on the pressure that you put through your levers to be able to figure out how to brake safely. So really, you just need to practice, practice, practice. Well, there we go. That is how to brake. We hope you found that useful. And do let us know how you get on in the comments section below. And before we go, one other thing to be mindful of is make sure you know which way round your brakes are. If you're going abroad and hiring a bike, then they might be swapped over from what you're used to, and that could be serious. So yes. just check that. Or even if you're buying a bike bike from a different country, yeah, really do be mindful of that. It's very important. Now, if you like this video today, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, you can click on the globe and subscribe. And if you'd like to see our Ask the Pros, where we ask them whether they prefer traditional or modern bike tech, then you can see that by clicking just down here. And for a video on rim versus disc brakes, you can get that here.